The Gospel reading this morning is from the Gospel of John. It's chapter 13, verses 31 through 38. When he was gone, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man is glorified, and God is glorified in him. And if God is glorified in him, God will glorify the Son in himself and will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and just as I told the Jews, so I tell you now, where I am going, you cannot come. A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Simon Peter asked him, Lord, where are you going? And Jesus replied, where I am going, you cannot follow now, but you will follow later. And Peter asked, Lord, why can't I follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. And then Jesus answered, Will you really lay down your life for me? Very truly I tell you, before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. This is the reading of the word of our Lord. You may be seated. First Corinthians 11, 1 Corinthians 11.1 says, Be imitators of Christ. And if we're to be imitators of Christ, well, it means that we love like Christ. Have you ever been an imitator or seen an imitator? One of the funniest things I've ever seen was on Johnny Carson. Well, it wasn't last night, I don't think. No. A few years ago, Johnny Carson had Rich Little on his program, and Rich Little studies people very carefully. And while he was on the Johnny Carson program, he imitated Johnny Carson, and he did all the little gestures that Johnny Carson used to do, you know, and he flustered Johnny Carson so badly that Johnny didn't know what to do with his hands anymore. He had to sit on them almost, you know, because he realized that every little thing he did on a regular basis, Rich Little saw and imitated. There's a lot of people that watch us. Did you know that? Yeah. A lot of people that watch us, and anybody who's been a parent has noticed that all the bad things they've done and some of the good things they've done, they've caught their kids doing exactly the same thing because kids want to grow up and be just like us, right? So I've got a little song here that is just about that, so... How many like country music? <laughs> Too bad. <laughs> it's kind of powerful, huh? Yeah. It's watching us. Jesus says, by this, and he's talking about the love that we have for each other and for him, by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples. You know, the, there's really only one sin. You aware of that? There's really only one sin. Now, you've seen long lists of all the things that we can do wrong, but I'm telling you, every one of those things amounts to one, and that's a failure to love. If you're a thief, it's failure to love. If you cheat on your partner, it's failure to love. If you beat your kids, it's failure to love. If you 
Cheat your boss at work on your time card. It's failure to love. Every other thing that you do amounts to one, and that is a failure to love. Ephesians 5, 1 and 2, follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. You see, Paul wants us to imitate God in one particular way. He wants us to love like Jesus. John 13, 34, part of the passage I read to you early, a new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. And 1 John 2, 6, whoever claims to live in him must live as Jesus did. And how are we going to do that? Well, you know, one of the ways is that we have to love others even when it costs us greatly. Philippians 2, 5 through 8, in your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. It cost Jesus his glory for a moment, didn't it? Did Jesus deserve to be humble? No, of course not. Jesus is all-powerful. He's all-knowing. He is love. He is perfect in every way. He's sinless. There's no way that Jesus has to be humble, and yet he sacrificed himself. He sacrificed his dignity. He sacrificed his glory. He loved us that much. Isaiah 53, 5, but he was pierced for our transgression. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. It caused Jesus great pain to love us. And so the question is, would you suffer for someone you love? And the answer is, most of the time, yeah. Yeah, you would. Most of you would be willing to go out of your way. Most of you would be willing to sacrifice. Most of you would give up something precious in order to care for, to love someone that you love. But that isn't the only thing God asks us to do, is it? God asks us to love the people we don't love. God asks us to love the people that don't even like us. God asks us to love everybody. Everybody. Matthew 27, 46, about three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lemma sambachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Do you realize it cost Jesus, not just in pain, but it also cost him in terms of darkness. You see, Jesus is light. He lives in the light. But for just a moment, Jesus had no fellowship with the Father. 1 John 3.16, this is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. It cost Jesus his life in order to love us. I can tell you for a fact that I have failed to love in my lifetime. I've failed to love because I've been too tired. I just didn't feel up to it at that moment. 
I've failed to love because I've been too busy, got lots to do, things to get done. No time for that right now. I've failed to love because I've been too cheap. Man, that's going to cost a lot. I, I just don't think I'm going there. I've failed to love because the other people are really unlovable, you know? Yeah, they're just unlovable, and I'm not going to do it. We're supposed to learn to love when it's costly. That's what Jesus did. We also must love when others don't deserve it. Romans 7, 8, very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Can you love a person who cheats on you? or that maybe cheats you out of money or something else? Can you love a person who's angry with you? Anger is really off-putting, isn't it? Can you love a person that cuts you off in traffic? Yeah, it gets hard sometimes. In fact, it's hard all the time. Can you love somebody who thinks they are better than you? Boy, there are a lot of people out there like that, huh? Can you love somebody who works for you? Can you love somebody who works with you? Can you love somebody that doesn't like you at all? Matthew 5, 44 through 47, But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. He causes his Son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. And if you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? And if you greet only your own people, what are you doing more than others? Do not even pagans do that. One of the things that I've taught my congregations over the years is that God doesn't ask us to do the stuff we would do anyway, right? No. When you say, oh, that's God, you know, asking me to take that big pay raise, yep, that's, I'm just sure that's God right there. No, that's not God. He celebrates with you that you got a pay raise. No problem there. No problem accepting the pay raise. But you know what? That's probably something you're going to do anyway. God asks you to do the things that you wouldn't do unless you knew him. Unless you heard that still small voice. Unless you knew it was the right thing to do. That's the thing that God asks you to do. Maybe God asks you to take the pay cut. Yeah, a lot harder, isn't it? But you may know that in that circumstance, it's the right thing to do, to take the pay cut. We're supposed to love people who don't deserve it. Because Jesus loved us, and we didn't deserve it, and we don't deserve it. You see, if our faith doesn't affect our behavior, then do we really have faith? Those people are watching us, right? And one of the things that they do when they watch us is they want to know if our faith makes any difference in our lives. And when we give a single finger wave to that guy that cut us off in traffic, they said, you know what? He's just like me. Our faith doesn't make any difference whatsoever in their life. And that's what they observe. If we're to love like Jesus, then we give the person cutting us off room to get in, you know? Boy, that's hard. I don't know about you, but it's hard for me. When somebody's out there driving crazy like that, and in thousands of other circumstances. 
We're also supposed to love others with action, not just words. See, one of the things that we have a problem with is our entire idea or definition of what love is. Because we think love is an emotion, right? Gushy feelings, soft heart. We've got all these ideas of what love is, and the world believes all that about love. But I can tell you something. You can love a person you don't like at all. How do you do that? How do you love a person that you don't like? Because you think I'm asking you to change your heart, that you've got to start liking them, right? You've got to start feeling the gushy stuff for them. That's not what I'm asking you to do at all. You can love someone you don't like just by treating them kindly. You see what I'm talking about? We need to love others with action. Just be nice. Be kind to them. And we are loving them when we do that. We don't have to like them to be kind to them. We don't have to like them to speak softly to them. We don't have to like them just to be generous with them, for instance. We have all kinds of opportunities to love people, and we don't have to like them. That God didn't even say we had to like them. He said we had to love them, and it's not gushy feelings. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. He gave his one and only son. You see, God acted on his love. His love had real action in it. It wasn't just, oh, I feel this incredible warmth towards all of you. Yeah. No, it's not like that. He actually did something incredibly sacrificial to show his love. For us, he took action. So here's the world's idea of love. Hold me, thrill me, kiss me. That's Gloria Estefan. Or that's what I like about you, Tricia Yearwood. Or the first time ever I saw your face, Roberta Flack. Am I dating myself here? I might be. Um, you making love Fun, or you make loving fun, Fleetwood Mac, Sugar Sugar, the Archies, by the way, I like most of these songs, I mean, Feelings, Morris Albert. God's idea of love isn't gushy feelings, it's serving sacrificially. Serving sacrificially. 1 John 3.18, Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. And the last one is that we're supposed to love without strings. That means freely. To give without expectations of receiving. John 10, 17 and 18, the reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my Father. You see, Jesus was not forced or coerced. He gave himself freely for us. And I can tell you, he didn't want to do it. <laughs> he made it pretty clear he didn't want to do it. In Luke 22, 42, he says, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. Because Jesus, if, if he'd had his will, he wouldn't have died a horrible death on a cross. That wouldn't have been his choice. So I want you to know that the greatest act of love is doing what you don't want to, to benefit someone else. That's love, and that's 
powerful love. And it's the love that Jesus did for us. And it's the love we will do if we are imitating him. And then the others will know when they're watching us that we're disciples of Jesus Christ. God bless.